Welcome to the Live to 110 podcast. My name is Wendy Myers, and you can find this video podcast on Wendy Live to 110 and on the on the my website live to 110.com. And today we are going to be talking to Reed Davis, founder of the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Certification Course, where you can get your FDN credentials. And we're going to be specifically talking about how to balance your hormones if you're a perimenopausal or a menopausal woman. Um, most doctors and healthcare practitioners will suggest hormone replacement therapy, be it synthetic or bioidentical. This is something I'm not a fan of, I'm not an advocate of, and we're going to talk about why on the show today. But first, I have to do our disclaimer. Please keep in mind that this show is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. So please consult your healthcare practitioner before engaging in any treatment that we suggest on the show today. Reed Davis is a certified nutritional therapist and founder of the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Certification Course, as I mentioned. And Reed is known as one of the most successful and experienced clinicians in the world today, having provided functional lab assessments for over 11,000 clients for hormone levels as well as adrenal function, (laughs) digestive problems, immune system and detoxification issues, as well as testing for infections, infestations of parasites, food sensitivities, and many health-related problems. Reed has served as health director and care manager at the Better Health and Wellness Center in Poway, California for over 15 years and now teaches a course in functional medicine with over 1,500 trainees in 50 countries. He's also a clinical advisor at BioHealth Laboratory where he helps doctors interpret lab tests or uh, about treating different symptoms rather than treating different symptoms. And Reed lives in Southern California teaching the FDN certification course and helping his graduates to build robust private pay practices. So Reed, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, Wendy. It's a real pleasure to be with you. I'm happy to help any way I can. Well, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you became so interested and passionate about uh, diagnosis through lab testing and developing the FDN certification course? Thanks a million. You know, I'll try not to uh, go into too much detail because it's really an exciting story. I actually came out of the field of environmental law. So I've been studying for many years. I worked in that area, uh, how bad the environment was. And uh, just came to change careers, kind of a job change thing, and I wanted to help people who I knew were sick. And I thought it would just be like a corporate wellness kind of, like I'll work for companies as a consultant and help employees get healthy and then they'll be more productive. Well, it turns out that, uh, you know, it's actually quite complicated, not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I had to go back to school and learn about some nutrition. And uh, so I got a certification in nutrition. I started working at a wellness center uh, and the doctors there let me talk to every single patient that came in. So I got this amazing amount of experience trying to help people walking in the door who had health problems. And I was the nutritionist. So I thought nutritional therapy was going to be what, you know, fixed them. In addition to whether they were getting chiropractic or acupuncture or whatever the other things were at this wellness center. Now, what I found out in a very short period of time was that the typical nutrition therapy or just nutrition alone wasn't getting to the root of the problem. And really, I was starting to feel like I was just a supplement salesman. So the way I was trained in nutrition, and so many nutritional therapists are trained this way, and other health coaches and people, you know, and even personal trainers and and all these really good, well-intentioned people. But it's not just about supplements, you know. So people, you know, would have adrenal fatigue or they'd have, you know, they'd just be tired all the time and they weren't sleeping. They had maybe moody, irritable, um, sinuses, allergies. Uh, they just, um, you know, digestive issues, joint pain, you know, whatever it was walking in the door, I wanted to help them and nutrition therapy wasn't getting deep enough. Now, just thank God I ran into the right people uh, who were in the early stages of this functional medicine movement. So I started way back 15 years ago running some lab work. And it just so happened that I started running hormone tests. That was my first kind of testing that I was really getting good at, really doing a high volume of. And the reason for that, by the way, was 
I was also, besides running this clinic, uh, I was out in the public doing screening. I was doing bone density testing. Now, I had a very successful um, eight years of doing that. Where I was out every week doing bone density testing in like Whole Foods and Sprouts and Henry's Market, these places with the you know cool vitamin department and that whole thing. So I got very popular in Southern California. I worked 30 different stores for eight years doing it. Now obviously, what's the demographic? You're gonna run into women uh, who are getting their bones tested because uh, they don't wanna have osteoporosis when they get even older. So I was working with you know 40 to 60 year old, maybe more like 45 to 55 year old. So that perfect demographic where, hey, you're curious about your bones, now you want to also look at hormones because hormones are a huge part of bone density uh, situations. So my background is that I uh, came out of environmental law, went into nutrition and a case manager at a wellness center, you know, doing nutrition on every person walking in and had a really uh, successful screening business. So I just got to do a very, very high volume of this early laboratory work. Again, selling supplements wasn't satisfactory. No one was doing it long enough to, for it to work. Um, and so, you know, I had to find out something better. So I started running these labs on all these women, mostly hormone testing at first. And so I learned how to, you know, balance hormones naturally, if you will. Um, back then, there really wasn't a lot of natural hormone therapy or bioidentical. It was still all like, here's your Premarin, here's your Premarin. Yeah. You know, and, and so there was a study that came out in 2001 that said, that's not a good thing anymore. And so all these women in 2001, I mean, millions of women and their doctors were like, well, now what do we do? Yeah. You know, the, the government actually shut down an eight-year study after five years because the risks, you know, the cardiovascular disease and the cancer and the blood clots and all the things that were happening because of this medication were outweighing the few benefits you would get. Like, and actually, it did help with the bones a little bit. And it relieved symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes and things like that. But again, all the risk. So they, they just quit selling this drug, pretty much. Yeah. And so, but, and no one knew what to do. So, but, you know, we, the guys that I work with, the physicians, we were kind of on the cutting edge of doing saliva testing of hormones and then natural therapies to see if we can't uh, get to the root of that imbalance that they were suffering from. And I have to say this, that uh, um, the environment and uh, the amount of stress people under has only gotten worse since back then. You know, so since that uh, study came out in 2001, uh, that's, you know, if you think about it, 13 years ago that we've been working on this. And hopefully I can help people. I can certainly answer questions about where they should go from there. But that's my background. Um, and then you mentioned the course, uh, you know, six years ago after I'd created this very successful model of investigation. First, investigate, investigate. What are the root causes of hormone imbalances or digestive issues or problems with the immune system or liver and detoxification issues? You know, what's those things are at the root of a lot of health complaints today. And so I, I learned not only to do the hormone testing, but all the other labs that we now do and that I teach in my certification course. And so, uh, yeah, it's been very... Uh, interesting. We're doing a lot of good in the world. We're having a lot of fun doing it. Well, so in all these years of uh, doing all this testing, what are some of the common denominators you found in the, the hormonal levels of perimenopausal and menopausal women? Fantastic question. So, uh, first of all, you know, natural menopause, real menopause is just the cessation of the menstrual cycle. So it means you're not going to be able to uh, have babies anymore. And it should be you know, the, the CDC says that it happens at age 51. So 51 is supposed to be the average age of the cessation of menstruation and you're not going to have babies anymore. No, it should just sort of go away. You know, oh, you're not going to bleed anymore. It should be, oh, I missed a, you know, I'm 50. I missed a period. Oh boy, I missed two. And then you miss six. And then after you've missed 12 in a row, you're not going <laughs> to have any more menstrual cycles. You're quote unquote postmenopausal. So it's supposed to be this natural, organic process and just fact of life, and it really shouldn't give you very many problems. The uh, sort of most common symptom uh, when you see menstruation in normal natural menopause is you have a few hot flashes. And that's simply 
your um, your brain, the hypothalamus pituitary, the, the brain is sort of sending out a signal to the ovaries. Hey, where's that estrogen? You're not producing estrogen. So the ovaries are done. They're not going to produce estrogen like they used to to ripen an egg and release it anymore. That's over with. So the brain is sort of missing. There's like a thermostat in your brain that says, hey, where's the estrogen? Where's the estrogen? So it will crank up what's called follicle-stimulating hormone, and that's a vasodilator. It makes little capillaries in your skin um, dilate, and so your core temperature comes out to the surface, and you feel hot and sweaty. And it can give you night sweats and be very uncomfortable. That's the only symptom that should be associated with menopause that would be considered just a normal reaction. Um, now, the problem is that women are now feeling that way at not 51, but at 41 and at 39. So what I'm noticing in the population today is that women are going through very early menopausal symptoms. Now, they will go to their physician and they'll say, well, you're only 39 or you're 42 or you're 43. You can't be going through menopause yet. That doesn't happen until you're 50 something. So let's just give you something for the symptoms. You know, yeah, so yeah. you might take, again, um, some of these medications are very helpful. They will relieve the uh, discomfort of hot flashes and night sweats and vaginal dryness. And then there's the moodiness and irritability. And then there's the things that, you know, your hair start. You're actually aging before your time. Now, the... So there's that way to deal with it. And by the way, there's even some natural supplements that people could take. Uh, there's lots of stuff on the shelves, and I don't endorse any particular product um, because I'm just not, I just don't associate myself that way. I want to be completely independent. So there's medication you could take for relief of the symptoms, or there are uh, natural products you could take for relief of the symptoms. But that's never been good enough for me. Again, I'm not a, I don't want to be a vitamin salesman. And so what I learned to do was look at the underlying causes and conditions that are bringing on that early menopause. Now, this should be no surprise to you, Wendy. It's chronic stress. And almost everything we're facing today that's not an infectious disease or, you know, you fall down and break a bone or something, it's chronic stress-related dysfunction and degeneration of the body. We're aging earlier now. And... Uh, you know, there's, again, sort of two ways to handle it. The um, Western modern medicine has gotten very, very good at handling symptoms. There's a prescription for everything. Yeah. Or there's, you know, and if that doesn't work, there's always uh, surgery. We're the masters of surgery. You know, we can just chop the part up. You know, so um, that's, to me, not to, not natural, and, and I don't want to go that way. And most of our... Um, interested community, they don't want to go that way either. They actually are now turning around and saying, well, is there something I can do? I'm willing to take responsibility. You know, I want to know why am I having these and is there something I can do? And of course, over all these years, I've come up with a number of sort of a step-by-step -step solution to just about every chronic stress-related disorder. And so, you know, first we could go through the list. You got your perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms, even though you're only 42 or 44 years old, or even younger today. But you've also got the headaches, the migraines, the sinuses, the allergies, the moodiness, irritability, the fatigue. And um, if we didn't mention it, it's a lot of sleep problems, things like that, which, you know, you, you, you feel like crap. So people um, are, their bodies are breaking down. They've got all this dysfunction. It's what I call metabolic chaos. Just the body just isn't working the way it's supposed to. And we can look at and sort of straighten out um, what all those things are that are contributing to metabolic chaos and then use the natural ability and desire of the body to be healthy. Uh, and coach that up, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, that's, so exactly, that's exactly what I experienced when I was 39. I just had a baby. I just, I felt terrible. I was exhausted. I was crabby. And I just thought, what in the heck is wrong with me? I couldn't lose weight. I was working out eight hours a week, all this stuff. So I went to my ND, my naturopathic doctor. Same thing, did all the testing, low testosterone, uh, you know, had the estrogen levels of a menopausal woman, low progesterone, estrogen dominance, blah, blah, blah. And of course, I was just given thyroid hormones and hormone replacement therapy as a suggestion. And I thought, you know, I'm 39. I'm not going on hormone replacement therapy. So what are some options uh, that, that women can use today instead of doing just 
doing what their doctor says and taking that prescription that they write? Well, first of all, if it's okay with you, uh, I'd like to say that that's a big difference between what I teach in our functional nutrition course. Fun we call it functional diagnostic nutrition. We don't want to call it medicine because most of us are not uh, medical practitioners. So we call it functional diagnostic. So we use labs, but we don't use them the same way licensed physicians use them. Just like what happened to you. You can go to your uh, practitioner and then uh, they might just listen and you tell them you have certain symptoms and they go, oh, here's something for that symptom. Now, the next level is that they'll run a test, but they will run that test generally based on those symptoms. So you might, let's say you present to your physician and you're complaining of um, your hair is thinning, your extremities are cold, icy cold sometimes, you have constipation, you're fatigued all the time, and you're gaining weight that you can't lose. Well, that sounds like it might be thyroid. Thyroid controls metabolism. Sounds like your metabolism has slowed down. So let's run a test on the thyroid. So they're looking at symptoms, running a test based on symptoms. And then what happens? Sure enough, pat, pat ourselves on the back. We found your problem. It's low thyroid. And here's your prescription. Yeah. So that may actually alleviate some symptoms. And that's never a bad thing. But no one is saying, well, I'm only 39. Why is my thyroid low? What's the cause? Is there something I can do myself? And I'd be willing to behave differently if you told me what I need to do. So that's where we go. So we don't just run a test based on symptoms and then treat the paper. So you can see what I'm saying. Uh, if you have low thyroid and you just write a prescription, you're treating the test results, yes. not the person. You're, and, and so you're artificially just saying, look, here's a marker here. We're going to give you something to bring it back up into range. And then we'll check you every couple months and we'll titrate, you know, in other words, adjust the amount of medication to keep you in that range. They're treating the paper. And you might actually feel a little bit better. But if you don't deal with those underlying causes and conditions, then, you know, the f function of the thyroid will even get worse. And then they'll just have to up your medication. So they're just still going to be treating the paper or new symptoms will appear. So it might be, you know, here now here's some other. And if you take the same approach, well, there's another. Med so you, that's why we find people on eight, nine different medications. Yeah, yeah. So that to us is completely unacceptable. And <laughs> now you asked, you know, well, what would you do instead? I do run some labs, but I look at basic pillars of health pretty much in every person. I do look at the hormones. We do look at the immune system. We do look at digestion, like the assimilation of uh, nutrients. And then also uh, we'll look for liver function, detoxification function, things like that, to make sure you're just working well. You need these pillars of health, hormone, immune, digestion, and elimination, and uh, detoxification, these things. So now we've got some leverage. We've got some areas, oh look, you need improvement here. That is not diagnosis and treatment of a specific condition. It's really just a nonspecific treatment of everything. Yeah, That's yes. body works. That's what I agree with. The whole body works as a system. You can't just treat the thyroid or treat the adrenals or treat this. It doesn't work that way. It's, everything is interrelated. That's what I love about your program. Well, thank you. And so what does it mean that the person gets to do? So once we identify some healing opportunities again not diagnosis and treatment of a specific thing but here's an area look your liver is congested you want to uh, start to improve that and then you know your immune system is involved because you've got um, you know irritation and inflammation in your gut so we need to get to the source of that eliminate that oh by the way you've got overgrowth of uh, bad bacteria and even some parasites and you've got some food sensitivities and you've got some so we are the guys that have developed the system that sorts that out for you. So we just give you healing opportunities. We identify those. And then, of course, you have to understand that the healing process is that it's a process. So you need someone that's good at coaching, health coach, about a step-by-step, -step, where to start, you know, what the goals are, and how to adjust along the way. So we have, and you could hold up your hand and label your fingers, D-R-E-S-S. -S. That's diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. Now, it really is as simple as that. That will help you heal every chronic stress-related condition. Um, anything that isn't diet-related 
or resting, you know, sleeping properly, exercising, and then the last one with supplements, it goes under stress reduction. So we find with our labs those hidden stressors, hidden dysfunctions, things like food sensitivities and uh, bacterial overgrowth and yeast and parasites and things. And there's metals and there's lots of other stressors that are completely hidden from you. Um, and we help you sort out whether they're in the environment or the food that you're eating and these kind of things. So uh, for diet, uh, we get you eating perfect for your genetic type. We have a test that will tell us your genetic requirements. Not everyone's designed to eat a lot of protein or a lot of fat. You know, Eskimos do great on 95% fat and protein. Um, and then there's tribes in South America that eat about 95% carbohydrates. Well, where do you fall in there? We actually have a test that will give us a starting place and a, and a good idea. We also can test for food sensitivities make sure you're not eating that. So we'd make sure you're eating right. Now, we'd also want to, we have a test that tells us whether you're actually digesting and absorbing and assimilating those nutrients. So diet's important. Rest is in so incredibly important. People just don't sleep enough, and they're up in the middle of the night, and you know it, it really causes a lot of problems. Your brain can't detoxify your whole body really if you're not sleeping properly. Now that sounds simple enough. So we could probably move on to exercise. Some people overexercise. Some people underexercise. The thing to remember is that there are behavior requirements to improving your health. And if you really want to get healthy, you've got to make some changes. You, and you need some coaching and need some step-by-step. -step. So ours, what FDN is truly is this diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, including all those hidden stressors, and some supplementation. And it's guided by the lab work. So there's a lot of people with holistic lifestyle plans. There's a lot of personal trainers. And there's a lot of diet, you know, people with diets. You could follow nutritionists and things. And there's some other modalities that might help you. There's chiropractic and acupuncture and things, you know. But they may not be using the labs at all. They may not be using the right labs that identify the areas where you need improvement. And of course, we're also experts at the step-by-step -step coaching. Yeah. And and getting, you know, giving you honest feedback, getting honest feedback from you, and adjusting the program. Because there's no one supplement that's going to do the same thing for every person. There's no one diet that's going to do the same thing for every person. Um, there's no one exercise program that should be the same for, you know, everything needs to be made for you. And so that's what we do is we, um, we have a holistic lifestyle plan, the Dress for Health Success program. But it's totally customized for each individual based on their history, their complaints, and their lab tests. And then there's a coaching process that... Uh, you know, requires some honest uh, effort and progress, and we can adjust it along the way. And so that definitely sounds like a program that will heal the adrenal glands, you know, which make all of our hormones, our estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. So why is it important to be able to heal the adrenal glands in order to correct someone's hormone levels? Well, uh, you know, the adrenal glands are taking a lot of blame these days for... Uh, you know, because they are the stress glands. They do make cortisol and adrenaline. And so when you are in a fight-flight mode, and we are a lot, we're just overly sympathetic dominant. You know, we get in fight-flight all the time. We're driving through traffic. We're answering phones. We're seeing junk on TV. We got, you know, kids. We got financial. We, we got all this kind of stress from the outside world. But we also have a lot of hidden stress. Again, if you have food sensitivities and parasites and yeast and uh, bacterial overgrowth and uh, maybe some metals and other environmental toxins and things, all of those are the chronic stressors we're talking about. And the adrenals are getting the blame for a lot of what's going wrong in your body. I don't place as much emphasis on the adrenals as some people because there's other organs in the um, – it's called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Yes. So you have organs in your brain that are kind of directing traffic, but in the adrenals are getting a lot of blame. Nonetheless, you do need to support the adrenals in most people and look at cortisol levels to see if they're high or low and figure out why. Um, they also make DHEA, which is the parent of estrogen and testosterone. And that's why the adrenals are so important, I guess, on that sex hormone level. So they make DHEA, dehydroepiandosterone, which breaks down in men mostly into testosterone and women mostly into estrogen. Now this is a perfect example, Wendy, of why um, if you have low testosterone symptoms for men or women and 
all you do is go, oh, look, testosterone's low. Here's your testosterone. You're really not considering this, you know, what's testosterone made out of? And is there something affecting that, you know? Um, and so that's why we take our whole, you know, chronic stress-related approach. It's really a holistic approach. It's not patchwork. Um, and it works for men and it works for women, uh, whether it's testosterone or estrogen. Remember, they're just the children of this DHEA. And that's just the child of pregnenolone. And that's, you know, so we're, now we're getting the bigger picture. And um, we're seeing that stress can kind of screw the whole thing up, if you will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've got all the charts and diagrams and things. And we do teach our practitioners and we teach our clients, uh, you know, how this actually works so that they're very empowered to take the right steps, to follow the behavior requirements. Because it isn't just pops and pills. Sure, we do supplements, um, but I don't have a brand n name. I, I don't own a penny's worth of stock. I don't do MLM. You know, I don't do anything like that. I have my favorite stuff, which I teach people about. But it um, doesn't matter to me where you buy it. You can go down to the corner store and get most of it. Yeah, so why don't you tell us uh, the importance of some of the hormones in the body and why that we need to heal, uh, heal the entire body in order to get them functioning properly. Yeah, perfect. So, um, well, obviously, um, if you take, you could take, you, you want to talk about the sex hormones, I think, because the subject of the show is menopause and perimenopause. Yes, yes. And so, because we could talk about thyroid for a couple hours, you know, that's really important. Um, controls metabolism. But with the sex hormones, uh, take testosterone, for instance, you know, that's responsible for your sex drive and muscle tone and energy levels and, uh, you know, clear thinking and, and brain activity and stuff like that. Those are pretty important things to be a happy person and to be a functioning person in society, you know, hold a job, you know, pay your bills, raise your kids, do all the fun stuff that we get to do, and grandkids now. Uh, so, so all this wonderful stuff. So testosterone, it's really important to have good, wholesome, natural levels. Now, the, the sort of uh, sister to that would be estrogen. Men are more dominant in testosterone, although women need it for those same things. With estrogen, um, if you have uh, too low of estrogen levels, you're going to have vaginal dryness, painful intercourse. You could have thinning skin, your hair's falling out, um, you're moody, irritable, um, fatigued. Uh, you could have breast pain. You know, you, you could have a lot of sort of discomfort around that too. And again, there's ways to sort of patch it up. And I don't even mind if someone does that. It's okay to take a supplement to, if it's a natural supplement, to, to help out a little bit to make you feel better. There's that, That's called relief care. That's okay. But if you keep in mind that those are just the children of DHEA and it's that's the sort of parent, and that comes from another hormone called pregnenolone. You know that that's and pregnenolone, by the way, is made out of fat, uh, like actually so the so-called bad cholesterol and B vitamins, and uh, you know so we have hormones being made. This master hormone making DHEA, which gets split into sort of either testosterone or estrogen, depending on which one you're dominant in. Well, if that's all that pregnenolone had to do was turned into DHEA and, and these two male and female hormones, it'd be great. But pregnenolone, this master hormone, now this is where I hope, again, I don't have the diagram in front of me, I hope you can see this, that pregnenolone also makes progesterone. It sort of sl can slide off into progesterone cortisol pathway. So now cortisol is the stress hormone, right? So if cortisol goes up due to stress, you end up stealing the pregnenolone and DHEA will go down, and your testosterone and estrogen will go down. So what I just showed you is how stress, which raises cortisol, will steal the master hormone, and you won't have enough left to make your sex hormones. That's called the pregnenolone steal. Now, I've argued this thing for 10 years as to how real that is. Um, there's some people who don't buy that. But I've seen it work over and over and over again in our practice where when we start to reduce the stressors and get cortisol and, and people sort of back to normal in terms of how they're dealing with their stress, whether it be mental, emotional, or what we're much better at is finding those hidden stressors. When you, when you start um, eating better and resting 
and you're taking the right supplements to balance your, your body out and give it its nutrition, when you get rid of the parasites, bacteria, funguses, viruses, when you get rid of food sensitivities and met, you start cleaning your body up real well, well, stress level goes down and things start to return to normal. So again, I'm not against using a little natural stuff for your testosterone and estrogen levels and balancing those out a little bit, get you through the hump, you know. But when you start really living, be, following behavior that addresses all your chronic stressors, it's amazing how much your life improves and things sort of go back to normal. And you did it all without taking a prescription drug, which, you know, have many bad side effects and obviously not where our audience wants to go. Are you a fan of a DHEA or pregnenolone supplementation? You know, again, that's sort of a jump starter. If you go back, and yes, I, I've used it a lot. We call those program enhancers. Mm -hmm. And so rather than do hormone replacement, which is testosterone's low, here's your pill or patch or whatever. Oh, estrogen's low, here's your pill or patch or lozenge or whatever. See, those actually would don't address the... Uh, hierarchy. They don't address the stressors. They're really just symptom relief. And so, again, I said a little bit of symptom relief isn't bad, but what we find is um, a little more, first of all, it's over the counter for the most part, so it's much easier to do in different countries. We have, you know, practitioners in 50 countries. We have to be very sensitive to, uh, we can't get those prescriptions because estrogen and uh, testosterone or prescription medications, but we can still get the precursors. Again, here's testosterone, estrogen, here's the DHA, and here's the pregnenolone. Those are called pro-hormones, and you can actually take some of those. You can get um, oils uh, that will be absorbed in your skin. You can get uh, pills you can take. They do go through the liver and get changed, but you can take sublinguals that go directly into the bloodstream, and so you're kind of letting your body deal with it. And uh, make, you know, in men it would, should make more, uh, the, uh, the DHEA and pregnenolone would go into the testes where it's going to get turned into testosterone. Women also make a little testosterone in the adrenal glands. But in women, again, the ovaries should be able to turn that stuff into estrogen, raise it up a little bit. So that often is enough relief. Is there a danger of, say, if you take pregnenolone, it'll turn into a hormone that you don't want? Like, say, if, you know, it can make some DHEA, but it can also turn into more progesterone that you don't need? Is there any danger well, of that? Um, it will convert into progesterone as well, but that uh, tends to be very protective. Progesterone is actually, uh, this is why progesterone therapy is so popular, is because it makes you feel better. Yeah. It's a diuretic. You can lose some water weight. It's... Um, relaxing we always have our clients take it before bedtime because it can help you sleep and it will um, boost low cortisol too progesterone um, will turn into cortisol and cortisone which are helpful they um, are good for you know keeping blood sugar levels up you know and all you know they're anti-inflammatory and they kill pain and things like that so progesterone is very very helpful it, there's also a backdoor shunt where progesterone turns into another pro-hormone called androstenedione, which feeds into testosterone and then eventually into estrogen. So progesterone is a, a cool thing. Um, you just wouldn't want to overdo it. And I wouldn't be very concerned about someone taking too much pregnenolone. Remember, pre pregnenolone will convert into progesterone, and then that goes down into other areas too. That's the other branch of the tree. Um, and you, you'd be you'd be hard-pressed to, to take enough pregnenolone to raise your progesterone to where it's too high. Okay. okay. We've seen people um, with quite high levels of progesterone who are actually doing very well. Um, there is a situation where you could get um, super saturation of uh, progesterone and uh, that could cause fatigue. Matter of fact, I have, I have a bottle right here of <laughs> progesterone and it's a little oil and um, you can put it on your skin. Like I actually use it, men, men can use it too. You put a little bit of that oil right here and you, and you rub your arms together and it's dry. You, this is also an edible oil so you can eat it and it, can, it actually gets absorbed through the lymph system. And so um, we, you know, just a few drops can be very helpful. Okay. And, and the precursor to it, pregnenolone, can be very helpful. Okay. So you're okay with uh, supplementing pregnenolone, I'm sorry, with supplementing the progesterone but not estrogen or testosterone? Well, th those are a little harder to get for one thing. Those are more directly related to relief care. 
these other ones, if you will, will sort of prime the pump and maybe help establish the reestablish the pathways that have been screwed up by too much stress. So if you can reduce the stress and take some of these things to sort of jumpstart the manufacture of these things in a more natural way, that's what we call it, kickstarting or jumpstarting. You could call it priming the pump with some of these nice pro-hormones rather than just slapping on the big daddy like yeah. testosterone um, or estrogen. And because estrogen, you have to be very careful with. It's obviously uh, some of it is carcinogenic, depending on how it gets metabolized. There's, you know, estrone, estradiol, estriol. They break down in the body, um, hopefully in a good way. <laughs> but yeah. some of them can actually be carcinogenic. So you you got to get the testing done before you do any of that. I would not suggest that anyone go to the store and just even though you can in the U.S. You can go to the store and buy these things um, without the proper testing and guidance. I don't think I would do it uh, for very long. You yeah, know, if you, yeah. I mean, people go out and try stuff. I just need to feel better. I just need to feel better. So they're hungry, you know, and they go and talk to a clerk and he's like, hey, yeah, try this, you know, and then they might get lucky and it worked a yeah, little bit. Yeah. But then the symptoms are going to come back or appear as new symptoms if you aren't really on a program of overall health wellness and taking a holistic approach. Well, that kind of leads into my next question about, uh, I'm just wondering what your opinion is on the school of thought that says taking supplemental hormone replacement rests the adrenals so that they can heal. Is What do you think about that? Uh, well, I think they're, they can, I believe in adrenal support. I'm more into like the B vitamins and some of the um, um, adaptogenic herbs. You know, they tend to be make you feel better while you work on the lifestyle thing. So there's nothing wrong with taking that support. Um, I, I think the way I do it, Wendy, is I say let's get the nutritional support and the vitamins and maybe some herbs and work on the lifestyle, reducing those stressors. I mean, look, if you got parasites and bacteria and yeast and you got metals and, and environmental toxins in your body, um, you're not doing any good, really, until you address those things. Um, you could be drinking bad water. You could be um, sleeping on toxic sheets, you know, fl flame retardants in your pajamas. I don't know. <laughs> There's all these things. I know airline uh, people are subjected to these flame retardants that are absolutely horrible for your body and your brain and your nervous system and, you know, everything. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you're not reducing the stress, identifying clearly and re reducing those stressors and the damage they've done to your immune system, detoxification system, digestion, uh, hormone glands like the adrenals. So you really have to take this whole approach. So just throwing some adrenal support at someone might actually make them feel a little better for a week or two or six. But w then what? That's what I ran into 15 years ago. Man, I was selling the best adrenal support you could get your hands on. Glandular with um, the, the B complexes and the herbal stuff that, that actually, you know, hey, I feel like, a, again, maybe that little rest and you're getting, you know, some energy back and things like that. But it just is so short lived. Yeah. And you have people today who will run a lab and say, buy my supplements. Here, run this lab, buy my supplements. You know, and, and, yet, and it, guess what? Um, you ask them in a month how you feel. I feel pretty good. I'm feeling better. Okay, and then, but ask them in six months, and it's like, oh, I'm back to the way I used to feel. You know, so um, I don't like that approach. So I would say start with the um, uh, the vitamin, you know, like B and C, those B complex and C vitamins, and the glandulars are pretty cool, and the some of these ashwagandha and rhodiola and um, you know ginseng. And these kind of things will help you feel better. Um, and then if you like that and you're working on your lifestyle and you're eating better and you're sleeping better and you're exercising properly and doing these, well, then, and you like where it's going, you we call the hormone, the pro-hormones, if you want to use some DHA and pr pregnenolone and even some progesterone, um, well, those are the program enhancers. See, but if, so that's how I look at it. And, uh but then the, the big daddies, testosterone and estrogen, we rarely use them. Yeah. We find that we don't have to in most people. Um, yeah. And so what do you think about the safety of um, bio, bioidentical versus synthetic hormone replacement therapy? There's a lot of women out there 
that feel like because they're not taking synthetic, they're taking, oh, I'm taking bioidentical. They have this false sense of security, I believe. And can you explain that a little bit? Well, certainly I would go that way if I was going to do hormone replacement. I would never take Premarin because it's made from horse pee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, it, you know, Premarin stands for pregnant mare urine. That's what it's made out of. And there's other kinds of synthetic um, hormones as well, including whether it's testosterone or progesterone. There's, there's synthetic everything. So those are absolutely, in my opinion, to be avoided. Um, you know, talk to your doctor about getting on BHRT, bioidentical, or we used to call it NHRT, natural hormone replacement therapy. But you're still just replacing the hormone. You're not dealing with the underlying causes and conditions and chronic stressors, not in, a, in an effective way. Now, if you're suffering from severe hot flashes and night sweats and vaginal dryness, you got to take you you can't tell that person, um, oh, you got to wait six months to straight. You know, they they'll go down the street and get something from someone else. So you use the very least amount uh, for the shortest period of time to get a little relief. We call that intelligent allopathy, symptom relief. Um, just for now, as long as you're willing to do all the behavior requirement again the d-r-e-s-s -S program so if you're if you commit to my dress program you know let us do our intake with the labs commit to the dress program let's get you on this behavior building step-by-step uh, -step system a little relief care is just fine so that's my honest opinion um you know uh as long as you're using the natural stuff the the i think your question Re, you know, that's how I do it, but the, it, it raises the issue of is that what someone's telling you you're doing? Like, like, and and um, so they sort of nowadays everyone sort of jumped on the bandwagon. The compounding pharmacies, who 15 years ago there was maybe one, now there's a thousand of them. Why? Because they identified a marketplace. They go, oh, women don't want to take primer anymore. Let's scram. They scrambled around for a few years. Okay, we're all going to sell. These are the same guys who were selling primer 15 years ago. Now they're just selling natural. Why? Because that's what the market's demanding. For what? For relief care. They're still just sort of hammering on, you know, yep, testosterone's low. So here's some natural testosterone yeah, yeah. Uh, or estrogen or whatever it is. So, so I don't believe in that. Uh, just sticking with the relief care. Um, I hope that came across okay. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. So, uh, what do we? What do you tell the listeners? Three action steps that they can take today to start healing their healing their their body and uh, balancing their hormones. Yeah, I think um, the three big ones for me are diet. You know, I mean, abs this doesn't. You know, aside from relief care. Okay, so pretend for a minute that that person that you're talking about has got taken some stuff or doing some stuff they know takes the edge off of their symptoms. So that could mean trying a couple of different products and certainly, you know, we, we know some things that work very well for people. So if you can get the edge off enough to where you can focus on your lifestyle, um, you, you would start with, you know, usually it's hydrating your body every morning and making sure you eat a good breakfast and a good lunch and a good dinner and uh, get that diet really perfect. The, there's a way to actually to find out what's the right amount of protein and fat and carbohydrates for you. Remember, um, if you give an Eskimo a South American Indian's diet, he's going to get sick and die, guaranteed. And if you put that South American Indian who's eating 95%, you know, uh, carbohydrates, uh, if you put him on an Eskimo diet, he's going to die. So, so there's actually a way to sort of find out what your genetic requirements are in terms of protein, fat, and carbohydrates and eliminating all the – we know what junk is. And there's certain foods that are bad for everybody and, and doing that sort of thing. So when you start doing that, hydrating your body, uh, eating the right amount of protein, fat, and carbs, the right ones, the right meats, the right or, or right kinds of protein, fats, and carbs – it helps you straighten your, yourself out. First of all, just having more energy is amazing from that. Um, f having a better mood, which comes from, is very good. And having um, satiation, not craving things. So you can, if you can get up every morning well rested, um, hydrate your body, and uh, eat the exact perfect diet that's going to give you energy, give you a sense of well being, and make sure you're not craving anything. 
obviously until lunch you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be hungry but you know that's an amazing thing just right there so the d alone is is the first thing and then of course um you want to have a good poop, you know, like yeah. a couple times a day. You know, elimination is really important. So when, when you do that alone, uh, your life can change. Now, um, again, I said after a good night's sleep. So so rest is really critical. There's a thing that we teach called sleep hygiene. So getting, um, you know, making sure the TV's off and there's no noise, no breath, you know, doing a little uh, quiet time and, and turning your body down. You don't want to go to sleep when you're all pumped up. Yeah. So there's lots of sleep hygiene things. And then the exercise is absolutely critical. We're meant to move. Um, uh, movement is medicine in and of itself. You know, you can't detoxify your body if you're not taking exercise. Um, well, you you know that I have this nice shirt on, but I also, I'm actually wearing sweats because I just came from the, from the gym, right? You saw me. And so, you know, you got to get to the gym or somewhere and do some it's diet that blood moving. exercise. Now, when it comes to that stress reduction, so I'm giving you five things. You asked for three. I have, only three. Like, okay, only <laughs> three. Okay. Well, th these are like my children. You're saying yeah. which one of the diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplements, yeah. which one would you chop off? Yeah. See, if you only did three, you'd only be doing 60% of the program, yeah. right? Yeah. You're leaving out stress reduction is huge. If it's you got to get rid of people in your life who suck, you know, or <laughs> get rid of the parasites or bugs or things like that. Um, food sensitivities are huge. That kind of ties into the diet one. Uh, all these things that are stressing you out, we can help you with that. And then supplements are important. Food just isn't good enough anymore. There's no nutrients left in the soil. Even organic uh, isn't doesn't have enough nutrients. The reason you eat organic is because it's free of pesticides and herbicides. So you're reducing stress by eating or organic food you were that's a stress reduction thing hey quit eating food with chemicals and pesticides and herbicides that's a cool thing right there um but there's still not enough nutrients in food uh and so we need to um take some supplements uh to sometimes they help stimulate organs they can help support uh just general function you need nutrients and uh and those kind of things so so i can't give you three i have to give okay. you five <laughs> Okay, bad question, sorry. So I have another okay. question. So what do you think, in your opinion, is the most pressing health issue in the world today? Oh, man. Um, well, there's that one side of it, like Ebola is pretty pretty uh, raucous, uh, causing a lot of upsets these days. I think it's chronic stress. Like I said, chronic stress-related disorders are what are killing us. Um, they're why the next generation isn't going to live as long as... Mine, I'm a, a, a early baby boomer, born in 1953, and so, um, you know, I actually grew up on farm food, pulling carrots up out of the ground, and just rinsing them off, it's eating the dirt that was on them, basically. That's what I was doing, too. And so, you know, I, I have uh, longevity, I have aunties that live to be 100, 98, 96, stuff like that, um, but I'm fearful for my kid, who's 32, and his kids, you know, that generation is going to die younger because of chronic stress, mostly from food, environment, and and those kind of things. I mean, that's kind of how my answer. I wasn't ready for that question, but but you know, chronic stress-related disorders, um, the chemicals that are in our food. Um, remember, I came out of environmental law. That was what I studied, um, and it's bad. I mean, there's eighty thousand chemicals in the environment. Only if few, relative few, a few hundred, even if it was a couple thousand of them actually been tested for safety, well, who's testing the other 80,000? We're the test. We're the rats uh, being exposed to it, and, well, let's see what happens. Well, what's happening, you're seeing in the chronic obesity, that's a major epidemic, especially in kids, um, cancer, you know, um, diabetes, because the amount of sugar we eat, and heart disease. I mean, those are the things. It's it's cancer, diabetes, heart disease, obesity. Um, it's killing people, and it's so prevalent. Um, you know, I, I don't want to just um, be on a stump here too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that's why I, it's it's so important to detox because it doesn't matter how good your diet is, or you exercise, or you rest enough. If you don't detox, you are not going to have the health uh, that that. Uh, you think you're going to be producing with those lifestyle aspects. You have to do the whole, run the whole gamut. I have so many clients that 
they live a very, very healthy lifestyle and they, they aren't well by the time they're 35 or 40 plus because they're not paying attention to detoxification and getting rid of these 80,000 plus chemicals. It's scary. Well, it can be overwhelming, you know, if you don't have a plan um, and a way of dealing with it and the wherewithal. I mean, some people just can't put um, anything together in their lives. They're, they're, um, and, and it's so it's, it's hard harder for some than others. Um, but you you got to have that desire. Uh, I think when you get older, you know, I'm I'm at an age uh, when it's my primary concern. Yeah. Staying yeah. healthy, active. Um, I want good, sharp mental ability and physical ability to do things I did when I was younger and yeah, keep yeah. try to keep that for long. Like, you know, you're the 110 year uh, program, right? Yes. <laughs> I, that's, that's, that's hope. Let's oh. hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 st- I read a book um, by a doctor at UCLA, I think called the 120 year diet. This was way back in my early, when I first got into this and I really bought into a lot of that, that, um, the anti-aging movement should be teaching people that um, it's not about not getting older, but it's about you get up to about 40, and then typically in this today's society, you get to 40, and then, you know, you're, you start to go down 50, and 60, you start to really go down, and then you die in bad shape. That's what's happening. Yeah. And that you, with drugs, you can probably stretch it out a little bit. But really, what, what the book taught me was that you should get up to about 40, be in really good shape, and stay that way, kind of flatline, until you're about 80. You should be able to spend 40 years as a 40-year-old. You know, it doesn't get to be 70 and stay that. No, you want to stay 40 until you're about 80. You know, and then you could, you know, you're, you're going to, we're, we're, you know, life is terminal. We're, we're designed to die. Yeah. But you, you should be able to stay, if you're anywhere over 40, you should stay 40 until you're like really old, yeah, you yeah. know, and and that's how I look at anti-aging is I'll never, no matter what I do, I can't go back to the, to the anabolic state I was as a 22 year old. That will never happen. But here I am 61 and if I could stay 39, 40 for another 20 years, I'm going to be a happy guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Reed, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was great. Very inspiring and informational. A uh, lot of good tips to help people improve their balancing their hormones and their health. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, about your FDN program and more about where people can find you. Well, thanks a million. You know, I uh, am uh, uh, available by phone at 858-842-3266. I actually do pick up my phone. Um, if I'm not already on it or working on a project here in my computers. But, um, and I have an amazing staff, uh, about 20 people, because we teach practitioners around the world how to do this work. So I have, you said 1,500. Um, I'm sure we're well over 1,700 practitioners mm-hmm. now that ha- are taking the course or they are already graduated and have successful FDN practices. So I teach a model of uh you know, again, we could call it care. It's a self-care model. So, and people opt into it um, because you don't have to do it. No one has to go see an FDN practitioner. We're trying to keep you from having to go see a doctor. That's the deal. So you, we we have the self-care opt-in model. I teach people how to do the lab work, what the protocols are, how to really understand it. It's an amazing program full of support. It isn't just an information product where, oh, okay, I'm going to watch these videos or study this book. No, we have you do the work on yourself. Uh, So for a practitioner out there, if you're a health coach or a personal trainer, a nutritionist, we have acupuncturists and a lot of chiropractors and those kind of people. So if you're any kind of professional or want to be one, you can take the course and learn how to be an FDN practitioner. And you'll get walked through everything. Work on it yourself. You'll work on mock-up clients and then you'll get a couple real clients um a lot of people just have their mom do it or something you know yeah. <laughs> their spouse but it's okay we're going to walk you through real test results and set you up so that you can uh run the labs remember we're not going to teach you to diagnose or treat uh, only look for healing opportunities and, and use a lifestyle program so i teach this lifestyle uh based dress for health success program guided by the lab work and i've been doing that for over six years thousands of people um you could go to 
It's uh, functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com. That's the easiest way to get there. And actually, there's a portal there where if you wanted to become a health practitioner, follow that portal. If you really just wanted to hire an FDN practitioner, um, there's a portal there for that too. And so just go to functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com and uh, tell them Wendy sent you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I have been uh, eyeballing a couple, um, you know, diagnostic courses where I can learn how to do a diagnosis myself or you know, using uh, testing and whatnot with my clients. So I'm going to be in the next few months taking your FDN certification course. Um, that's the one that I'm choosing to take. So I definitely recommend any of you health coaches listening, uh, definitely consider adding it to your practice. I think it's an incredibly valuable um, as opposed to just teaching people about diet. You, it's definitely you want to take things to the next level. Um, so Reed, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Wendy. Pleasure to be here anytime. Yes. And, uh, looking forward to the next one, whatever it is. Um, we can do lots of subjects, you know, uh, whatever is bothering your listeners, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's do it for sure. Okay. And and uh, stay, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay on. So guys, if you want to listen to learn all about detoxification and the modern paleo diet, definitely go check out my website, live2110.com. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Live to 110 podcast.